Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for your time attending this session. Uh, my name is Kyungsi Khan, one of the authors of this paper and an associate professor at Hanyang University in South Korea. Um, I am very pleased to present our work. I have no text in my post using visual hints to model users' emotion in social media at a conference this year. Um, this work is done together with uh, Juno Song, uh, myself, and Professor Sang Woo Kim. So let me first uh, present the background of this research. So the emotion is one of the inherent characteristics of humans. So it is either direct or indirect indicator of a mental state and plays a important role in one's daily life. For example, when we are doing social interaction, um, self-reflection, decision-making and so on. Uh, as more and more people are using social media, this online platform has become an important source for expressing and sharing our emotions. And there are many types of online social platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, used by many people. Uh, with such high use and increasing dependency on social media in people's daily lives, a great amount of data uh, embedded with emotions are generating online. So types of social interactions are also diverse. Uh, we have images, video, text, emojis, and so on. And these are some examples of posts in which emotions are expressed in posts. Um, while the role and affordance of each information type vary, uh, people are now showing strong preferences uh, for social media platforms that support image or video-oriented interaction. Many reports have shown that people are using Instagram or TikTok more than text-based uh, platforms like Twitter. And we are also experiencing this trend, especially from young generations. So this means that there will be more image or video data than text data. And also text will be shortened and more hashtags, uh, which are mostly just single words will be used rather than full sentences. So when it comes to research on emotions, there are uh, roughly three levels of emotion features. So first, low level features uh, include colors or textures, uh, which is somewhat lack reasonable interpretation. Uh, second, mid-level features are more uh, human interpretable than low, uh, low level features. Examples include PAEF, uh, and a taxonomy of 100 twin, 102 discriminative attributes, and lastly, high-level features present the semantic information of images, which are more interpreted by humans. Uh, examples include facial expression, size of faces, pairs of adjective non-words, and so on. Uh, in addition, recent research has used deep features uh, by employing uh, machine or deep learning. So even with various methodologies used in prior research, uh, much research still relies on text information for emotion modeling. However, uh, this method does not sufficiently reflect the current trends of social media use. And the model from such an approach may not work well with the data generated from recent social media platforms. Uh, deep learning models still lack transparent explanation about the relationship between one's emotion and image characteristics. Uh, so in this work, we focus on another aspect that has been less considered in prior studies, contextual information. So contextual information refers to the one that is relevant to an understanding of the post. Uh, and it often includes a user's intention and emotion is one of the intentions. So actually the necessity of using contextual info is also highlighted in a recent survey paper on effective research. So we focus on contextual information for emotional modeling. And in this work, we use a notion of visual hints, uh, which are explicitly or implicitly embedded in the image. So we aim to understand the characteristics of uh, visual hints and their relationship with emotions in social media posts. Uh, more specifically, we identify the characteristics of image information as emotion expression, examine the relationship between visual hints and emotion, and we classify emotions with features of visual hints uh, with these three research questions. So let's move to the study procedure and methodology used in this work. 
This is overall study procedure. It mainly consists of four phases, survey, data preparation and collection, uh, data analysis, and data modeling and evaluation. So first we conducted a survey from 300 active Instagram users using Amazon Mechanical Turk. So the goal, goal of the survey uh, was to confirm the validity of using visual hints for understanding emotions from users' perspective. So we had three uh, survey questions. Uh, SQ1 was to use uh, to verify uh, whether using a hashtag is appropriate for data collection and emotion labeling. SQ2 was used to check whether people show their emotions in the image. SQ3 was used to examine how people's emotions are expressed in the image. In the second phase, we collected Instagram posts using emotion hashtags. We use three positive hashtags and three negative hashtags that are used many times in prior studies. So we collected around 20,000 posts per emotion, and we then filtered out spams and the posts with multiple emotion. We also manually uh, check all the posts. After this process, we had around 108K posts as our final data set. At the same phase, we extracted features from a post which has both an image and a text. So from the image, we extracted RGB and HSV color information and visual hints. For visual hints, we use Microsoft Azure Cognitive Service API that returns a list of objects with confidence score. So in this example, uh, the visual hint includes sky, women, looking, building, and so on. And we use the object that have more than uh, have over 0.7 confident value. Uh, with visual hints, we use TFIDF to vectorize them, and we also check other embedding methods, but use TFIDF because it showed the best. Uh, for the text feature, we use the word in the text field, and then uh, we excluded the emotion hashtags here. With the text, we also use TFIDF as a final embedding method. In phase three, we conducted data analysis. So prior studies reported the role of colors in classifying emotions. However, the images used in prior studies were not from social media. So we wanted to see whether a similar aspect uh, will be observed in social media images. So we checked the distribution of colors for each emotion group. We also examined the distribution of visual hints, or before that, we conducted a topic modeling using LDA. And with a topic, we checked the distribution of the topics of visual hints for each emotion group. In phase four, we conducted emotion modeling. And the objective here was to test the effectiveness of visual hints as a feature for emotion detection. So this figure illustrates the uh, architecture of uh, fully connected uh, network FCM model, and you will see more details in the paper. <clears throat> and for comparison, we also developed the models of SVM, logistic regression, random forest, and decision tree. For more detailed comparison, we also developed uh, deep learning models. So we developed CNN model, and this table shows the uh, component of it. And we also develop more models with uh, through transfer learning using AlexaNet, VGG19, and so on as pre-trained models. And this is a procedure of the model. So let's talk about the results. So that due to the time limit, I will briefly explain the findings for RQ1. So that this slide shows the result of the survey question one. And then uh, the, the results indicate that our rationale of using the emotion hashtags for data collection is well supported. And the for survey question two, uh, it, it was about ways to express users' emotion in social media posts. <clears throat> and the, from the result, we confirmed that the use of images uh, is highly frequent as a way to express one's emotion in the post. Survey question three was about ways to express emotions in the image of social media posts. And we confirmed that visual hints of the image are valid information as a way to express the user's feeling in social media posts. Uh, please see more details in the paper. Uh, RQ2 was about the relationship between visual hints and emotions. 
So we examined the color, color distribution for each emotion group. And as a result, we did not see any significant differences in colors between two groups. Another investigation was puppy modeling from visual hints in two emotion groups. And this table shows 15 topics uh, and keywords for uh, each topic in each emotion group. Here, trying to find out uh, the meaning of each keyword, uh, to each graph, uh, each group is not particularly meaningful. But the one noticeable aspect is that the keywords are quite different between uh, two emotion uh, groups. Um, and then uh, this slide shows the distribution of the topics in the emotion group. And we can see that the frequent topics are somewhat different between two groups. Uh, the positive group has animal, fashion, and person, while the negative group uh, has state, color, person, and object. And this slide shows another distribution result, which is from the visual hint. So this figure shows the top 20 most frequently appearing visual hints. So the same as the previous distribution result, the person topic appeared the most frequent, but except these th uh, top three topics, the frequencies of other visual hints were uh, quite different, which means that uh, each visual hint can be a feature that represents each group. Uh, RT3 was about the validity of visual hints for, through modeling. So we first compared the performance of the model, emotion classification model, using F1 score as a metric. As you can see the table here, the model with visual hint showed a 20% better performance than uh, with the color feature. Also, the model with visual hint show a comparable performance to that with text feature. The model performed up to 0.76 when all features were used. Uh, this table shows the performance result of model based on fine tuning and transfer learning. Here, our model with the visual hint showed the best performance than other models. So overall, the result of model performance in this and previous slides highlight the effectiveness and also robustness of visual hint features in modeling emotions. Lastly, we investigated another uh, interesting aspect of visual hint. Uh, we developed a model using either hashtag or caption with different amount of text information. So for the range of text info, we use the median value or the hashtags and the captions. Um, so we built the FCM model from text and that from visual hints only for each group. So the results are quite interesting. So the performance of the visual hints model was quite steady over different condition, while that of text model highly varied by uh, each condition. So this result showed the uh, robustness of visual hints as features for emotion modeling. So from what we present in the result, we want to discuss a few points. The first point uh, is about color distribution. So our study results show that the distribution of the colors were not significantly different between two emotion groups. Uh, this finding is somewhat inconsistent with that in prior study which we think can be explained by the nature of social media. So social media platforms are designed to support information sharing and great amount of uh, posts come from individual users <clears throat> and contain information that uh, reflects uh, various, various aspects of users' life, like thought and random information. <clears throat> so when we look at the data used in prior study, they use images of artistic photos or abstract paintings which are mostly created by professionals. So these images are quite different from casual images in social media. And then the characteristic of posts in such uh, environment uh, would be different. Thus, the conventional notion of colors in images uh, may not work well uh, in, uh, in social media context. The second point is about visual hint distribution. So we found that the frequency of topics and the visual hint of each topic appear quite different between two emotion groups. So uh, when you take a closer look at the result, the two emotions have different degree of abstraction in visual hints. Positive emotions have more visual hints that are more explicit and less abstract. Uh, the negative, visual, uh, negative emotions have more visual hints that are more implicit and somewhat abstract. 
So this insight can be considered at different levels of representation of visual hints in two emotion groups. The last discussion point is about feature validation. So from our model result, we confirm that visual hint features are effective and robust in classifying emotions. So regarding visual features and text feature, uh, models with text features show the highest performance, uh, but this requires to have a sufficient amount of text information as we saw in our analysis. On the other hand, uh, using visual hint only show a comparable performance to the model with text features. So the key takeaway is that image themselves uh, can play a significant role in implying emotions. So given that the image has become the primary information type and people's use and reliance on social media, uh, text is decreasing in social media. Uh, result of our study highlight the uh, necessity of analyzing emotion through image information using visual hints. Also uh, of eliciting salient features of image for emotion analysis and modeling. Uh, so in conclusion, in this paper, we reflected the current trend in the creation of social media posts and address uh, limitation of prior research uh, on emotion modeling. We demonstrate the validity of visual hints for user emotion analysis and modeling, and visual hints can compensate text info and improve the use of image features. So thus, uh, we, what we need to focus a little bit more is to find more ways to extract visual hints, uh, which are the contextual information of the image. So this is end of presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. And I'll take your questions. Thank you, Kyunsek. Uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, very interesting work. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, if not, I have actually a few questions, but for the sake of time, I'll just ask one. Uh, so uh, when I look at your data set, it looks like the data set was more or less balanced in terms of the positive versus negative. Uh, was that the actual distribution on Instagram? Like, did you do some sort of small scale study to see if it's more positive or more negative? Yeah, thanks for the great question. So you're right. Actually, uh, we used six emotions and use the hashtag for each emotion. But you actually find more, uh, found more images from, um, from actually the happiness, uh, the, the positive uh, the groups a little bit more. So we did a little bit uh, work more on uh, collecting negative emotions as well using hashtags. Mm -hmm. So we, we did slightly work a little bit more on that in order to balance the data set. So we here, we have a little bit of intention, our intention to have the, uh, the data, have the, the two, two emotion, uh, six emotions have similar uh, number of uh, samples. I see, uh, just one more quick question. So uh, the, you have this like positive and negative uh, uh, emotions. And sometimes there's some debate on whether these should be called sentiments or affects. And you know, you have these like Plutchik's wheel of emotions where you have all these like joy, interest. So did you look, try to look into those like different aspects of? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question as well. Um, you, you mentioned uh, there are a lot of uh, emotion types and uh, cases that we can consider for the research. So we think thought about uh, the, the lot of other types of emotion cases for this study, but we kind of ended up with uh, using the emotion that used a lot in prior studies. So uh, that's, that's why we uh, uh, end up with using six emotion in this study. But we are also aware that, that this uh, kind of emotion research can be expanded uh, more with different types of emotion. And the findings might be different. But, uh, but the reason why we focus on positive and negative is rather than seeing each emotion type specifically, we want to collect the data for positive and negative using the emotion and then we conducted research on the rather positive negative aspect of the social media posts. We try to look at the details of each emotion, but it is a little bit difficult to do that at the moment, but that's something that we want to investigate in the future. 